स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू टूडे लेक्चर वी हैव बीन डिस्कसिंग द क्वांटम मैकेनिकल सॉल्यूशन ऑफ हाइड्रोजन आइटम टुडे वी वुड डिस्कस वन पर्टिकुलर एस्पेक्ट ऑफ हाइड्रोजन आइटम प्रॉब्लम दैट वी हैव सो फार इग्नोर्ड दैट इज when we draw down the hamiltonian of this hydrogen atom we said that we have this nucleus and an electron and the electron is orbiting around the nucleus so therefore you draw down the kinetic energy of the electron and the potential energy of the electron uh, which potential energy of the attraction between electron and the nucleus but what we have ignored in our formulation is that there exists an inherent or intrinsic property of electron which is not yet considered in our discussion that is electron has a spin this spin is inherent to the nature of electron you cannot separate spin from an electron if there is an electron electron has its spin so spin is always present so therefore there is a flaw in the discussion that we had and we would try to correct it uh, to some extent in in today's class one thing that you must keep in mind is that spin has the spin of electron that we are discussing has no classical analog so here is a new system that we are, a new uh, property that we are going to discuss which doesn't have any classical analog uh, but we would provide a quantum mechanical formulation for for this it was first discovered by the experiment uh, in the experiment by uhlenbeck beck and gorsmith in 1925 when they observed splitting in the d line of sodium uh, spectrum this was the first experimental observation but the explanation of it could be obtained by a stan gerlach experiment where an atom was subjected to magnetic field and then its effect was uh, analyzed to express to explain that i am going to take help of a uh, an animation which is found in in the internet so i would simply uh, go to this uh, website whose address is there in the in the slide i would show you this quick animation you see suppose i have applied an applied a magnetic field and now i am sending a bar magnet with a particular orientation through this magnetic field when the mag this tiny bar magnet goes through the field it gets deflected based on the orientation of this dipole and then you if i monitor this i would see that it would be deflected to different extent based on the orientation of the initial orientation of this tiny tiny magnet now you would see if i do this experiment many many times i would see that all possible orientations are observed on the other hand if i send instead of a bar magnet if i send a quantum mechanical magnet that means a, a, an an electron which has got a spin i would see that instead of having this continuous distribution of orientation i have only two different orientations possible these two different ori orientations i popularly we call them as alpha spin and beta spin in this case what we see is that this electron behave like a quantum magnet so this video uh, is designed and realized and the the credits are being shown here i i uh, gratefully acknowledge the contribution of these uh, people in making this beautiful animation which uh, gives a nice insight about the uh, stan gerlach experiment as i mentioned the link to this uh, video is shown uh, here so to summarize what we saw is that if we send electrons which are which behave like quantum magnets we would actually have two only two orientations uh, whereas a classical uh, prediction would have said that all possible orientations are allowed so this is what we would try to uh express in terms of the quantum mechanical formulation so what we have seen is that uh that electron has got this spin and 
the spin of this electron can be expressed through the so called spin angular momentum. The nice thing about it is that the spin angular momentum of this electron follows all the angular momentum commutation relations that we have discussed during our discussion on the angular momentum. So, for example, if you remember uh, the L x L y which are the x and y component of the angular, uh, angular momentum operator they did not commute with each other. So, similarly the this now s is replacing the L, L is the uh, general definition of the angular uh, momentum and now I am considering s which is the spin angular momentum and one can show that this the, speed, the x and y component of the spin angular momentum they do not commute with each other. In fact, s x, s y, s z they do not commute with each other whereas, there exists this operator s square which commutes with s x, x, s y or s z. So, again similar to angular our discussion with angular momentum operator we now have this uh, special case where I cannot simultaneously define uh, the s x s y s z whereas, I can define s square and one of these three components of s vector, uh, s vector operator. And uh, analogous to what we did we are now defining s square and s z are the two operators for which we are constructing the uh, I common eigen functions. So, the eigen functions for these operators are still given by the same spherical harmonics a only thing is that what is the values what are the values of s and m s. We have different particles how which have got different spins. For example, electrons have this spin is of one half well, on the other hand the, the protons also have spin of half photons have got s of 1 spin of 1 and pi ions of s equal 0. So, different subatomic particles have different spin they are these the spin angular momentum of these particles are their inherent nature their character uh, this is how they are we up uh, we know this by doing doing experiments. For example, when I talk about the electrons I saw that when I uh, sub subject them to a magnetic field external magnetic field I see only two different orientations. When I have two different orientations that means, I know there are two different states. So, from our earlier discussion we said from our discussion we knew that uh, when for, for a given value of s my m s value would be from minus s to plus s in the step of 1. So, I make I, I wrote this expression in terms of l and m l, but now I am def defining them in terms of s and m s. So, here for example, since I, I would see therefore, how many uh, states should I see? So, I would see y s m s the number of states that I can see are 2 m s plus 1. Since, in the case of electron I see only 2 states therefore, m s must be half and that would see that my s s when I define my s value as half then I would be able to describe this. So, these two different orientations show that we have two different states and how can we have two different angular momentum states? We know that for a if we have angular momentum uh, s corresponding to that I have m s value going from minus s to plus s in the step of 1. So, therefore, if I have angular momentum as s I have 2 s plus 1 number of m s values. So, therefore, y s m s the number of such uh, functions is are given by 2 s plus 1. And since in the experiments that I we discussed I have got two orientations or two different states. So, therefore, this shows that s or the spin of electron is half. When spin of electron is half what are the uh, spin spin states? So, I have m s going from minus s to plus s. So, therefore, I have one state as y half minus half another function is y half plus half. Please note that these two functions have same value of s 
but they have different values of ms or the orient magnetic orientation so these two functions are popularly known as alpha spin or beta spin or up spin or down spin uh, as i said this these are pure quantum mechanical functions they have got no classical analog now let us see what are the expectation value for this alpha spin and beta spin since these are the same spherical harmonic function that we discussed in angular momentum when i apply s square operator on this function the eigen values would come out to be s into s plus 1 multiplied by h bar square when i apply s z operator on this function i get ms multiplied by h bar as the eigen value so in other words if i apply s square operator on alpha spin i would get s is half so this is 3 half into 1 half that is 3 by 4 h bar square alpha spin so alpha spin actually represents the state of that electron so h square when i apply on beta spin i again get So, both alpha and beta are eigen functions of s square operator. They are also eigen functions of s z operator. When I apply s z operator on alpha, I get m s into h bar, m s I call uh, for alpha spin as plus half. So, this is h bar by 2 uh, alpha. When I get s I apply s z on beta electrons, I get minus h, minus h bar by 2. So, both alpha and beta electron are simultaneous eigen functions of s square operator and s z operator. Now, what has happened is that we have defined our electronic wave function psi n l m as a function of r theta and phi. This function we described as in terms of radial function which depended on n and l as a function of r and then the angular function uh, which depended on l and m which quantum numbers and the functions were theta and phi. So, this is our hydrogen atoms eigen functions that we have defined and using these eigen functions we are actually describing the state of the electron. So, you already know that we have different energy levels and corresponding to one energy level corresponding to uh, energy levels depended on only n whereas the wave functions have dependence on n l and m and for a for an energy level corresponding to principal quantum number n we had n square number of states defined but uh, in all those definitions we had ignored the electron spin so now to describe the total final or the complete state of the system or the complete state of the uh, the electron in this hydrogen atom this is not adequate because we have left something and that is the electron spin so now my new wave function that i should have not should have not only dependence on n l m which will have r theta phi but i also should be introducing my y s m s what is this coming? These are the spin functions of the electron and since electron half spin half spin as half. So, I am writing this y half and m s. How many functions are there of this kind? There are two. So, therefore, each orbital here psi n l m will now be having two different manifestation based on their electron spin. So, I can have now psi n l m m s r theta phi maybe I would introduce omega as the spin coordinate. So, I have these three at the space coordinate and this one is the spin coordinate. 
So, for since there are two possible values of m s, so therefore, I will have now each psi n l m will be split to psi n l m alpha psi n l m beta. So, these are now the two functions, the, the two uh, eigenfunctions that define the state of the electron completely. So, if you remember for energy corresponding to principal quantum number uh, n, we had n square number of psi n l m. This for n equals 1, we had only 1, for n, n equals 2, we had 4 different functions. Now, we see that since each state function, this special function have can be split into 2, one corresponding to alpha spin, another corresponding to beta spin. So, this gives me as 2 n square degeneracy and this 2 n square degeneracy takes into account the effect of the electron spin. So, when I describe this wave function, this is not a mere orbital, this I actually call as spin orbital. The spin orbital, so these and these are called spin orbital and these are called normal plane orbital, which mean that I am talking about only the special coordinate, so space. So, popularly we call this orbital, that is why one orbital could hold two electrons, one with up spin, another with a down spin, that is because the wave function corresponding to a special, orbit, special orbital has two spin orbitals in it. Now, we will continue our discussion, because what we have seen now is that we have electron which is going around the uh, nucleus. So, therefore, it develops an orbital angular momentum and then we have got this spin which is also an angular momentum. Now, we have got two angular momenta in our system. So, what is the consequence of that that we will discuss? For example, when the electron goes around the uh, nucleus, we develop the magnetic dipole moment uh, that we describe as minus E divided by 2 m E L, where L is the orbital angular momentum of this electron, E is the charge of the electron and m is the uh, mass of the electron and this minus sign is coming because uh, of the charge of electron which is minus E. So, this is the orbital uh, magnetic dipole moment that gets generated because the electron is moving. But since now we have the electron which has a spin, I would also expect another dipole moment which will be spin dipole moment that will be present in my system. How would I write that? I will write something very similar way E divided by 2 m E and instead of L vector I write spin. So, S this corresponds to the spin angular momentum, but uh, there exists another term over here we call this G or the uh, this is called anomalous spin factor. Which is equal to 2 for 1 s orbital of hydrogen atom. Its values would actually uh, keep on changing for different angular momentum. So, this depends on the uh, angular momentum uh, 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 of, of the electron, but this anomalous spin factor is, is present in this case. We are not, we will not be able to derive this uh, quantity, uh, this g in this expression, because this has got purely quantum mechanical origin and Dirac's uh, method of uh, relativistic quantum mechanics obtains this value of g uh, from ab initio, but for our discussion we will just introduce that we have this term over here. So, now I see this hydrogen atom that I have which has, has a uh, simple uh, uh, one nucleus and an electron, I see that the fact that the electron goes around the uh, nucleus, it develops a orbital dipole moment and since electron is a has a spin, it has a spin uh, angular momentum. Now, these two angular moment, uh, these two dipole moments, they interact with each other. So, this angular momentum 
and this angular momentum L and S they couple with each other. So, we have got orbital angular momentum and the spin up or, uh, electron so and they couple. So, when they couple without this coupling I had the Hamiltonian of the system the kinetic energy of the electron the potential energy of interact uh, uh, between the electron and the nucleus. Now, this was the Hamiltonian that we discussed. Now, because we have this orbital angular momentum and spin angular momentum and then they are interacting with each other. So, we have this uh, L dot s as the new term which is called the spin orbit coupling. Spin orbit coupling. So, this is the new potential uh, energy operator that is appearing in my Hamiltonian. So, this is often uh, given uh, with a multiplied uh, multiplied by a constant uh, which is called the spin orbit constant. So, this spin orbit uh, co constant uh, uh, is a, it would be a function of the internal coordinate it would also depend on the uh, principal quantum number of the other states and so on. So, this is now my new Hamiltonian. So, the point uh, that we would now discuss is that if I did not have this term and I had only these two terms in my Hamiltonian in that case the Hamiltonian would have commuted with the angular momentum operator. We know that that is because we have used this uh, the function as the uh, the total wave function as the radial and angular uh, function because we saw the Laplacian has uh, this operator Laplacian has a Legendrian term and that has a fixed value or definite value of L. So, therefore, the Hamiltonian would commute with L operator. Since Hamiltonian did not talk about the spin at all. So, therefore, in this case the Hamiltonian would have been would be commuting with spin because the Hamiltonian did not have any term which depended on the spin variable. So, therefore, they would be two independent uh, variables. So, they would anyway commute, but now when I have this term added into the Hamiltonian. So, this commutation does not hold. So, what what is the consequence of it when H and L or H and S the Hamiltonian at the spin or the orbital angular momentum they commute then I can express the eigenfunctions of this Hamiltonian operator in fixed value of orbital angular momentum order with a fixed value of spin, but when they do not commute there is a problem. The problem is that the total eigenfunctions that I would have for this new Hamiltonian which has now the spin orbit term would not have a definite value of an orbital angular momentum nor would it have a definite value of spin angular momentum. So, that is a uh, problem for us. Luckily for us what happens is that we can show uh, with, with some algebra that even if L and S they do not commute with ha the Hamiltonian what would commute is uh, a new angular momentum that we call L plus S we define that as a uh, new operator j. Uh, this can be shown that the addition of two angular momenta also gives you an angular momentum. So, we define this L plus s as, as a new j uh, angular momentum, where this j angular momentum would commute with the Hamiltonian when the spin orbit in coupling is introduced in my uh, problem. So, now since j angular momentum commutes with the Hamiltonian. So, the eigenfunctions of this Hamiltonian would not have a fixed value of L or would not have a fixed value of S rather would have some fixed value corresponding to this j angular momentum. And since j is an angular momentum operator, so I can always uh, define its uh, eigenfunction as y j m j where j square if I apply on this. I would get j, j into j plus 1 h bar square y j m j and if I use j z on y j m j I will get I will get m j h bar. So, this is the beauty of angular momentum operator because if I define that this is an angular momentum operator I have readily available uh, solution for, for this angular momentum operators. So, now I, I 
see that these functions y j m j are going to be the Eigen functions of the Hamiltonian and not y l m or y s s y l m or y s m m s they are not going to be Eigen functions of this Hamiltonian where spin orbit coupling is introduced rather this y j m j are going to be the uh, Eigen function of this Hamiltonian. Now, the point is that how do I define this j and m j this is what we would do now here. So, if I have defined j as uh, l plus uh, s. So, the the quantum number j would go from l plus s to l minus s mod and of course, m j value will go from minus j to plus j in the step of 1. So, therefore, I have 2 j plus 1 number of m j level and j value. So, let us see when l equals 0 what are the values of j for spin of electron since we are considering electron. So, s is half. So, the j values are 0 plus half to 0 minus half mod of 0 minus half. So, therefore, j is only one value of and that is half. When j is half what are the m j values? So, m j values are plus and minus half. So, what are the final functions y half plus minus half. So, these are the new Eigen functions of my Hamil of the Hamiltonian of hydrogen atom when I have spin orbit coupling introduced. So, for L equals 0 I am getting two functions half plus half half minus half where these are expressed in terms of j. Now, let us do it for L equals 1 when L equals 1 s is anyway spin of electron. So, that is half all the time. So, I can have 1 plus half is 3 half 1 minus half is 1 half. So, these are the two different values of j that is available. So, corresponding to j equals 3 half I have 2 j plus 1 number of uh, m j values they are plus minus 3 half and plus minus half and for j equals half I have 2 j plus 1 that will be 2 number of m j values and these are the values. So, how many functions I define here? I define y j m j sense I define 6 number of functions y 3 half. So, what are these function y 3 half plus minus 3 half y 3 half plus minus half and y 1 half plus minus 1 half. So, I have now 6 number of functions for L equals 1. Similarly, for L equals 2 you would see that j can have 5 half or j can have 3 half and then in that case you would see that number of y j m j would be 10 because m j values would be uh, uh, plus minus 5 half plus minus 3 half plus minus 1 half and in this case we have plus minus 3 half plus minus 1 half. So, I have 10. So, please see when L equals 2 this is d orbital, when L equals 1 this is p orbital, when N equal L equals 0 this is s orbital. How many functions can I describe in terms of for s orbital? There are 2. What are they? When I have s orbital I write in this way. So, this electron is defined by each electron is defined by one of these spin states. In case of p orbital I have now place for 6 electrons. 3 of them will have uh, will have 3 different special orbitals and for each special orbital we can have 2 different orientations. So, these are the 6 functions that I have for p and similarly for d orbital I can have uh, 10 number of electrons which are given here. So, in this way when we in incorporate spin orbit coupling into the uh, Hamiltonian that we have discussed we can see that we are obtaining the complete identity of the electron in our hydrogen atom problem. Thank you for your attention.